Honourable members, honourable members, the speaker is very vigilant. And as I mentioned earlier on, the ability to catch the eye of the speaker includes good behaviour. And if for four years you are here and you are not able to catch the eye of the speaker, I'm sure the good people of your constituency will not accept you again. So please kindly abide by the code of conduct which you yourselves approved here on the floor of the House. With this, I want to, in accordance with Standing Order 724, convey to His Excellency, the President, the gratitude of the House for the address. Yeah. Honorable members, again, in accordance with the practice of this House, a formal communication will be forwarded to His Excellency, the President, after the House has thoroughly debated this address. I want to thank all of you for your cooperation, but to emphasize that Ghana is out. Actually, we are down, but not out. And Ghana will rise again. Honorable <laughs> members, On this note, I want, honorable members, I am, I want to call on the majority leader to indicate the nature of the business on the floor. I don't want to go direct to tell him that this is an indication for him to move for an adjournment of the session. I say I don't want to. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, and considering the optimism with which Mr. President has spoken to the nation, and uh, Mr. Speaker, you were right, and Mr. President himself acknowledged that considering the situation we find ourselves. We are down, but we rise again under, under the able leadership he is providing and the future which is assured. Mr. Speaker, we are by the practice of this House ready to debate Mr. President's message. Considering that the situation we find ourselves as a country, Mr. Speaker, we are ready to debate this message now. However, Mr. Speaker, as has been the practice, members would want to prepare. And I noticed that the minority leader was jotting down a lot of notes. I need to remind him that I have with me the 2014, 2013, and the 2016 State of the Nation Address. And all of these were full of lamentations. So, Mr. Speaker, I don't know what he was actually jotting down. But if he was any, 
it was a, a, a debate he was preparing for, Mr. Speaker, I want to assure him that we will face him with this optimism and remind him of the lamentations of 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016. Mr. Speaker, without more, I shall pray that this house be adjourned to tomorrow at 10 in the forenoon or soon thereafter. Mr. Speaker, I so move. And I urge my colleague to second the motion. That is a practice. He should second. He should just second. Today is not for debate. Mr. Speaker. Fortunately for me, my mentor and coach is still available. I'll see the tutorials. Yes, indeed. Yes, that is true. There was, a, there was a smooth transition. There was a smooth transition. We had a smooth transition. We had a smooth transition. We had a smooth transition. Mr. Speaker, I am encouraging Dr. Fawcett to only second this motion. The rules of the House are very clear. It shouldn't go outside of the rules. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Atufosin, please second the motion and let's adjourn. leader. Right, Honorable Speaker, let me, on behalf of the NDC minority, thank His Excellency the President for his message on the state of our nation. But Mr. Speaker, the unemployment situation in our country is at a critical point. Mr. Speaker, the Hansard will record me today. Mr. Speaker, the unemployment situation in our country is at a critical point. Yet, yet, we did not hear a word from our president on this matter. Mr. Speaker, out of 33 million population, only 11.3 million are employed. This number includes peasant farmers. Mr. Speaker, the difference between the 33 million and 11.3 million is what I call ninja. No income, no jobs, no assets. Honourable members, honourable members, honourable members. Yeah. Whether you are a front bencher or a back bencher, I see you. <laughs> Minority leader, you may continue. Mr. Speaker, this means that three, two out of every three Ghanaian is unemployed. Mr. Speaker, 30% of our youth are jobless. And about 4.5 million Ghanaians plus, employable Ghanaians plus, are outside the labor force. Mr. Speaker, this simply means that this number have simply given up on their search for jobs because of years of frustration and disappointment. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the state of our nation is hopeless. No wonder that an ordinary Ghanaian, including professionals, are leaving our shores in droves. 
in groves, in search for greener pastures. Mr. Speaker, finally, Mr. Speaker, I am scandalized. I am shocked to the marrow to have noticed that our president, following the recent ministerial reshuffle, has increased the size of his government. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, today we have a Minister of Finance Domestic and a Minister of Finance International. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, one dollar today is 13 cities. During the time of President, President Mahama, one dollar, three cities, 80 pesos. Mr. Speaker, a vote that was started. Mr. Speaker, to conclude on this matter, Ghanaians, Ghanaians voted for Ghanaians voted for Vice President and are paying for the Vice President to support you to succeed. Mr. Speaker, you cannot fail, the President cannot fail alone. The President will have to fail together with the Vice President. So, Mr. President, you have failed with your Vice President. Mr. Speaker, I conclude. I conclude by saying that Ghanaians will not miss President Kufuado and Alajabao here. We know you are going. We can only wish you bye-bye. We can only wish you bye-bye. But you will never be missed. Mr. Speaker, I second the motion. Honourable members, honourable members, honourable members, the motion has been moved and seconded. I now put the question. As many as are in favour of adjournment, say aye. As many as are against, say no. Honourable members, I put the question again. As many as are in favour of the motion, say aye. As many as are against, say no. Honourable members, I think the ayes have it.